Looking forward and considering our current spending crisis, can we afford to continue to dole out this cash? Can we afford not to? Maybe a better question. Joining us is Bloomberg View Executive Editor Jamie Rubin. Jamie served as Assistant U.S. Secretary of State during the Clinton presidency under Madeleine Albright. So thanks for joining us today. Good to be with you. Uh, let's talk about, first off, the news. I mean, how big is this? It's obviously been a priority of the last of this president and the last. Uh, how, how important is it that we, that we got this done? Well, I think it's extremely important. There's no single act I can think of that would have done more damage to the threat from al-Qaeda and the threat from Islamic extremism across the board than the bringing to justice of, of bin Laden. And I think the White House uh, top officials have called it, you know, a strategic blow to al-Qaeda. I think that's fair. Uh, they have been set back. Their cause has been set back in combination with the Arab Spring, which uh, brought increasing democratic government to places like Egypt, uh, Tunisia, potentially other parts of the Arab world. The one-two punch of the Arab Spring plus the killing of uh, bin Laden really means that the whole al-Qaeda idea has been wiped off the uh, modern geopolitical map. Hey, Jamie, it's Carol Masser here at The Exchange. Let me jump in for a second because I'm talking to market watchers and they say, yes, this was a very significant, very symbolic uh, win for the United States. But they say a lot of the senior lieutenants of Osama bin Laden are still out there, that the al-Qaeda network is very vast. And that is still something that we've got to deal with. I mean, so have we really, really uh, done something significant when it comes to terrorism in the United States? Well, I don't think it, this is by any means the end of the, of the need for a vigilant counterterrorism strategy. But I do think it's extremely important. The, the idea behind al-Qaeda, the funder, the creator, the inspiration for al-Qaeda, the person who spawned T-shirts and, and some support uh, in parts of the Arab world is now gone. Uh, and there will not be a chance for him to uh, inspire others. That, that's a big deal. But unfortunately, as you point out, there are lone wolves out there that were inspired by al-Qaeda. There are uh, remnants of the al-Qaeda organization in Afghanistan and some in Pakistan. And so terrorism, the threats from terrorism from Yemen uh, and others in North Africa are real and continuing. Uh, but I think at least it, for our country, this, this does bring a, a degree of closure uh, for the World Trade Center attacks uh, for, for some. But sure, surely no closure for what's going on uh, in Iraq, in Afghanistan. I mean, we just showed half a trillion dollars of spending there, and we're obviously going to keep a huge presence there. Not only do we have to deal with Afghanistan now, but clearly, rather than hiding in a cave, uh, Osama bin Laden, top terrorist in the entire world, was sitting in a mansion in Pakistan. I mean... What does this say to you as far as the, the war on terror, the war in Afghanistan going forward? Well, I think you've put your finger on the, the real fundamental uh, new challenge the administration and the world now faces. People have suspected for a long time, uh, judged that Pakistan had this double game in the way it dealt with terrorism, dealt with al-Qaeda, dealt with the Taliban. But the, the stark reality of a the world's most wanted man living uh, a few hundred yards from the Pakistani military base where their military chief had recently been so close to the capital of Pakistan, you know, puts in as sharp a relief as humanly possible the contradictions we face in dealing with Pakistan. On the one hand, we need them. We want them. We don't want fighters going from Pakistan into Afghanistan. That country has nuclear weapons. On the other hand, what is going on here? Who, how could they not have known? And if they did know, how many times have we been lied to by that government? That's the real, the real poser. So how does our relationship there pan out? I mean, under George W. Bush, this country became fairly unpopular globally, and I could understand why in Pakistan that would happen as well. The, the current president has made an attempt to really reach out to Muslims around the world. How is he doing in his relationship with Pakistan? Well, I don't think, uh, despite his effort and the effort of Secretary of State Clinton, who really spent a lot of time trying to punch down these rumors in Pakistan, these conspiracy theories, she spent a whole week going from city to city trying to deal with some of this 
uh, misunderstands and, and conspiracy theories. Uh, despite those best efforts, uh, the the relationship with uh, between Pakistan and the West is deeply flawed, and part of that is because Pakistan itself is a country that is not really come to grips with some truths. There are many, many Pakistanis, perhaps the vast majority, who are Western-oriented, Western outlook, who are Isl Islamic, who are Muslims, but who believe in similar values. But there are a lot, enormous numbers, millions, who cheered when, when uh, an extremist uh, killed a very rational uh, minister of education in that country. There are many, many Pakistanis who who have allowed uh, terrorism to flourish in Pakistan, have allowed the Taliban to go back and forth between Pakistan and Afghanistan. We have to come to grips with it. We have to develop a new approach to Pakistan. The current one just isn't working. So, Jamie, what needs to be the next step by the United States government, the State Department specifically? I mean, has the war on terrorism, has anything really changed, or do we just kind of keep adding to the list? Pakistan now, uh, you know, maybe more prominent on that list. Well, there is a next step in the foreign policy world, and that is what I was just talking about. But meanwhile, uh, with respect to Pakistan, but meanwhile, I think the counterterrorism policies of the administration, of the previous administration, those elements that are consistent, that is intelligence, law enforcement, use of military force when necessary, uh, the vigilance, the cross-agency cooperation, all of the things that made this raid possible and that's made it possible for us to not have a second 9-11 in this country, that has to continue until a lot more is done to shrink the, the potential pool of terrorists and a lot more is done to secure the homeland. But on the foreign policy front with Afghanistan, uh, the war there coming up to a crucial point when the president is going to have to decide how many troops to allow uh, to be to removed, uh, knowing that we have an ally in that war, supposedly Pakistan who allowed bin Laden such a, a, a home yeah, so, so prominent in, in, in that country is going to make it that much harder for us to figure out how to change the Pakistani relationship. And that is a poser. I don't have an easy solution, but they sure better get one in, in Washington. Jamie, what about concerns? Last night uh, people were talking about us even before the president made his speech, and this morning obviously feeling it, concerns about retaliation. I mean, have you heard anything about getting prepared or ex expectations for some sort of retaliation? Well, I, I've heard some of the experts and some of the people I've talked to, and I think the, the, the summary of what I've heard and, and, and believe is there's two ways this can uh, go. One, you can have lone wolves, individuals who uh, were affiliated with al-Qaeda or inspired or supported them. And I think though the risk of a lone wolf attack has probably gone up considerably. But as far as an al-Qaeda-supported su uh, uh, operation, I think they, they've had a reason to want to attack us for a while, and this has not made that part worse. So some lone wolf risks, I think, have gone up. Jamie, thanks so much for joining us. James Rubin uh, joining us, former Assistant Secretary of State under President Clinton, and now working uh, with us here, fortunately, at Bloomberg View.